G'day guys, welcome back to our weekly wrap, senior men kicking off with our championship men here today in their second last round for the season, Wyndham getting up at home to kick it off 108 against Campbell 97, Mark, a pretty convincing win for Wyndham as they, they continue to stay in that top three. Yeah, Wyndham are um, hitting form at the right end of the season and it, I think they use this as an opportunity to get their bench plenty of plenty of minutes. Daniel Herbert um, was great off the bench and, and shot the ball well. Um, Maurice Howard got an opportunity to play less less minutes, which is great. For um, for the Dragons, Anthony Kimball was a beast, um, but they didn't really get much of a whimper in terms of um, challenging for a win. Absolutely. Bellarine were unable to get it done at home losing to McKinnon 70 to 106 a pretty comfortable win there for McKinnon Hume were able to get it done at home in quite a uh, quite a close game here against Keysborough 102 to 98 an overtime battle here mark yeah this is our game of the week and uh, we obviously picked well because uh, it, it went right, right down to the wire and um, Watching watching this one on Saturday night, it was it was so impressive. Troy Manassa, obviously brilliant for um, Hume as he usually is, but I'll tell you what, in overtime it was Chris Elder who who stepped up. He hit three threes, um, which really sort of gave Hume the advantage from the get go of overtime. And Keysborough were just left chasing, which they did a, a pretty good job at. But um, yeah, they just kept on. Just fell short. Uh, Newby was great with 20 points, 12 rebounds and four assists. And um, Calvin Ainge was um, proved to be really effective as well and um, caused a fair bit of headaches for uh, for Hume Broncos. Yeah, very interesting to see here in, in an overtime game where, you know, foul discipline and rebound count and, and free throws especially are sort of the biggest things that free throws win games and, and how important they are in overtime games that, Keysborough shot 90% from the free throw line, 18 to 22, to Hume 69%, 16 to 23. Bit of an interesting stat line there. Yeah, so I mean, realistically, if Hume shot a little bit better from the free throw line earlier on, they um, that game would have been put to bed. Could have been over exactly. Sumbri uh, took the win quite comfortably here against Blackburn, 101 to 66. Ballerine fell short again on their double header, losing to Melbourne Uni. 84 to 91. Yeah, it was really good to see um, Bellarine, led by Louis Valley. Um, they put up a really good fight in this one and, and made made sure McKinnon had to work for it. Um, you know, McKinnon have... Oh, sorry, Melbourne Uni, I apologise. Um, you know, Joel Rhymes and Isaac Turner sort of did their thing, but they're a team which is in the hunt for finals and, and, and Bellarine really made life difficult for them in this one, which I think is something when you're one of those bottom sides, something you sort of hang your hat on late in the season. Absolutely, and to round it out for a championship, man, Campbellwell got the win, 99 over Western Port. A very nice win there for Campbell to round out the season. Yeah, a huge performance by uh, young young big man Jay McKenzie, 44 points, 21 rebounds um, to go with six assists and seven steals. Realistically, I, I got to see the back end of this game on my way back from Coburg, and um, he was just dominating the boards he just jumped over the top of everybody got the ball and um, put the ball back in the hoop so um yeah he was he was brilliant and anthony kimball um was great with 31 points and they didn't really need anybody else they got the job done over western port and obviously scott stone and call that i keep the scoreboard ticking over for western port but um unfortunately they weren't good enough on the day there it is moving on division one men here this is the last second last round uh, last round, apologies. Last round before finals kick off for them this coming weekend. We had Shepard and get it done at home, 102 over Southern Penn, 60 pit six. We had Warnable get the win, 93 over Boleyn, 82. Warrandyte got the win over Collingwood, 92 to 69. Uh, to then see Gippsland have a big win, high score line, 108 to Chelsea, 103. Yeah, Chelsea's um, Chelsea's usual suspects, but they just can't defend. Unfortunately, the uh, Aaron Frost was massive with nineteen points, twenty seven boards to his name, and Elijah Dave with thirty seven points, nine rebounds, six assists. They'll be pleased with how they finish the season on a personal note, um, but only going to the game with six six players probably hurt them down the stretch. Four, three players on four fouls uh, makes it a lot tougher to defend, and. Um, you know, and then you look at uh, Gibson United. It's good to see um, Cody Tibble step up. 30 points. That's his best game of the year with five rebounds, four assists and five steals, if you don't mind. 
um, and they they're sort of primed and ready to go for finals. Ted, absolutely, they definitely look it for sure. Uh, we had Packenham get the win, eighty five over Coburg, sixty six, and then RMIT to round it out, falling just short, sixty nine to Collingwood, seventy one. With I believe an absent Steve Coffey here. Yeah, it looks like Steve Coffey was resting the body before finals. They it, well, they weren't at risk of losing that second position on the ladder, so. Um, he's had a couple of ankle issues over the year, I believe it was. Um, but, yeah, well done to Collingwood to finish the year strong. It's not always easy. It's sometimes you, you sort of start to get checked out. But uh, Wally and, Noah and Wally Elnor, uh, 22 points with seven rebounds. Um, he was great, and as was Kai Feng, 19 points um, with five steals. So, you know, RMIT would be a little bit disappointed with that. They would have thought they could get that done without Coffee um, playing, but... Um, you know, no doubt, Coffee comes back, it's going to be a completely different ball game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't expect them to, to change their mindset at all. You know, they'll go to training, whether it's Tuesday, Thursday, whatever their training schedule is, and, and they'll be prepped and ready for, for finals, I have no doubt. Yeah, for sure. Division 2 men here, again, their last round of the season before they run into finals this weekend. Altona got the win at home, 92 over Wallen, 75. We had... Sherbrooke fall short, just fall short over Medjura, 83. Yeah, so we got Sherbrooke here. Christian Soderholm has put the cue in the rack. He was no longer, he uh, didn't play in this one. Um, and Mildura just needed to make sure they got this done, I believe, to secure a third spot. Um, you know, Tyron Shattuck was huge off the bench, 28 and 12. Um, and then Sammy Gazzo and Cameron Gross sort of got did what, did what they needed to. But, um, you know, a good win for Mildura. Uh, before they, I then believe they might arrest a few players on a, for their Sunday game, Ted. Yeah, it looks like it. They fell short to Melton, 98 to 70. Melton getting a nice win there to round out their season, unable to make finals. But yes, it does look like Mildura did have some sort of resting bodies here for sure. Yeah, Shattuck didn't play after his huge game the night before. Dallas Brown didn't play. David Meyer didn't play. Um, and Cameron Gross rested as well. He's had a toe injury. So um, it was it was a little bit of a strategy there, Mildura, to make sure they could be ready for the next weekend. But um, well done to Melton to finish the season strong. They've had so many competitive close games. They couldn't just quite get over the line. Liam Allison with a triple-double. Um, Kobe Skenderis with 30 points. You know, they've got some good pieces to get prepared and ready to go for next year. Absolutely. Wallen got it done at home, 88-260 to, to follow up after their unfortunate loss on the Saturday night. And then to round it out, Whittlesey got the win, 92-76 over Mornington Palincia. It was our last game of the season. Whittlesey finishing in that top position, so they do have the week off round one of finals. Yeah, I think this goes. This game is a perfect one to go show their strength. I mean, Ash Breyer back in the lineup. He's been missing for a while now, so he must be getting ready um, back for final, 11 points off the bench. But um, you notice Pat Green, usually we're sitting here praising his efficiency. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to hit the side of a barn this week, but um, he was able to get, get four assists and really pleasing to see the Pacers be able to step up when he isn't scoring. So Gabe Evans, great game, 23 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Um, Jason Dirk stepped up with 20 points. Um, so, yeah, to be able to get the get the game done when one of your best scorers um, hasn't hasn't hit anything all day um, is really pleasing for it. We'll see against the fifth place Mornington Breakers. Absolutely. Look, that'll be all for us, senior men. You've got two divisions in finals this coming week with champ men very, very closely behind. See you guys later.